We are at the American Association of Woodturners Symposium in Louisville, Kentucky, and I am at the Easy Inlay booth. And I thought it would be useful for Xtool users to see what kind of uh, setup I'm using here to introduce wood turners to uh, the joys of using lasers. And uh, this particular company sells inlay materials and, and supplies, and so I'm showing people how to do inlay, for example, uh, putting shells into wood by using uh, sheets of material. But I thought it might be interesting, particularly for those people that are considering an M1, to see some of the additions and modifications I've done to the M1. But first we'll start with how I am uh, demonstrating here. And what I did is I put the M1 on a cart, and because there's no place to vent, I've got the smoke purifier underneath the cart. I also have the air assist under the cart. Um, the computer is actually resting on a box for a, an Xtool air assist for the M1, which is a very cool tool. And I've got some Velcro that's just holding the uh, computer down. I've got uh, a monitor here that is showing the, uh, the bed. Uh, part of the M1 lets you uh, view the bed and I've got it just tethered so that nobody can, uh, can knock over my, my stand here. Um, and of course there's a little electrical cables and stuff in the back. But I made a couple of changes to the M1 which I thought you might find interesting. One is that the, well it's not the easy stuff, uh, the measuring ruler for measuring open plane, I just put a little piece of Velcro on it and stick it over here. Uh, I also added some lighting. And uh, the reason is, and you'll see if I turn this on and off, I put lights in the front. You can see that it'll light up under the rim here. And the reason is I've got a camera pointing towards the front of the bed so I can see the entire bed in real time. It's a 120 degree camera and I made a little mount out of uh, cardboard, out of poster board. And you can see it's peeling up and there's a, a Velcro strip behind it so I can push it up and down to adjust the angle. There's a fellow on Etsy that makes some interesting uh, accessories. Like he has these mounts here that clip onto the air assist channel and that lets you use the, uh, put the magnets in because you have these magnets that ship with the riser base which are actually quite nice and you can either stick them in the honeycomb but he says well let's put them in here um, so they clear the, uh, the lid here very nicely um, he also has little handles for the front and back here to make it a little easier to lift this. And um, I'll show you something on the other side. Part of this also has clips that clip under the machine uh, to wrangle the hose for the air assist. I have this extra wire that's coming out of here is for the uh, webcam that I put in the front. There's something that I can't show you for the moment because it's, it's installed. He also sells little feet. So I've, I've made this board here and I've put his little feet under each of the, uh, the corners of the, um, of the riser base. And uh, there's clips that hold it down to the riser base, uh, down to the board. So that keeps this from moving around on the, on the board. But I also added some Velcro here so that I could tie the M1 to its riser base. I've got them on all four corners. And this is uh, really useful when we were transporting it from our home in New Jersey uh, in the car um, to uh, Kentucky. And I also have uh, some Velcro 
that goes around the whole thing from the board all the way around uh, to the top to hold the lid closed during transport. The task here is to inlay some shell material into a piece of walnut. So the way we're going to do this is take a piece of walnut and I've got some transfer tape here that's been smoothed down just to keep the amount of charring uh, to a minimum when I'm cutting the pocket with an engrave uh, uh, procedure. And then we have this shell material, which is power shell. And it is a thin material and it's very nice because it has an adhesive back on it. So on this, I'm also going to put a piece of of tape on it and burnish it down. Now, looking inside here, here are some pieces I've been working on. So what I'm doing here is I've got this piece of wood and I'm just going to put it down here. And what I've done is I've got a couple of uh, magnets and some mending plates, which I'm using just to keep the material up at the same height as the wood. So that way I can do a process and run the whole thing as one procedure, because now this piece and this piece have the same focal point. So now we have this project in Xtool Creative Space, XCS. And over here, we have a, a line that's gonna cut out the heart. And over here, we have a combination object here where we're gonna engrave the pocket. We're gonna, in effect, vaporize the pocket. And then I'm just doing a little cleanup cut around the edge. So this is over here, the wood outline versus the wood engrave versus the shell cut down here. And so if I now come up here and click on refresh, this will let the M1's camera show the workspace. And so now I can see that I can take this and drag it over here. And I can this one and bring it over here. And if I decide I want to move the work, I can just move it around a little bit and refresh and say, okay, now I want to put this over here. Like I want to just do it a little bit more on the edge like that. If I just break the thin paper and I want to turn it, I use this carbide, but you can see. And so you can adjust either the work or the piece. So the the task is actually going to um, first do the engrave, then it's going to come and cut the object here, and then it's going to do the tracer line. So if we look over here, well, first of all, I'm using open plane, open plane here, and uh, seven millimeter is the uh, the focal length or the distance from the from the lens. And uh, if if you're using um, laser flat, it asks you for the thickness of the piece. That's different than open plane, which you're telling how far away it is from the piece rather than how, how tall it is off of the bed. So if I go to process this, you see the two objects that need to be uh, cut. And if I press process, then we have to close the lid. And you see no that little, this, like this button yeah, here is yeah, throbbing. So it's not going to start until I press the button. And I have added an extra camera to the front of the laser. And it's a 120 or 25 degree camera, low distortion. And it's mounted at the underside of the frame. And I also put another row of lights in the front so that when the gantry comes forward, it is not casting as deep a shadow. So if I now press go on this, you can see the shadow 
and so the lighting in the front allows me uh, a little better view of the material and also uh, having a live camera in here uh, allows me to monitor it from uh, across the room or whatever without actually having to look through the lid and it's just like, like using cameras. So it takes about a minute to do this. Oh, haha. <laughs> um, evidently, I have my light set to, uh, to uh, do multiple changes. In fact, I can actually stop it just by opening the lid. And I must have hit the, uh, the button here. I should be able to continue it. So that's a nice thing. You can stop it and then continue it. And anytime you open the lid, it pauses the, the job. And then it's going to go back and cut the shell, the heart out of the shell. And then it will come back and do the little tracer line just to sharpen up the edges on the heart, on the, the pocket. And it takes a little bit of uh, testing to figure out how to deal with the kerf of the beam. It's kind of like the, the width of a saw blade, cutting the inside of the heart versus the outside of the heart. Um, it, in this case, I've got about 0.4 millimeters uh, difference in the, in the size. So now I can take this out here and here. And I should be able to pop this out. And by taking off the transfer tape, now I've got a, a clean a clean burn here. And so now there's two steps. One is I need to take the uh, transfer tape off the front of the heart that I put on it. And then take off the release paper from the adhesive. And this particular adhesive actually uh, cures with moisture so it, the moisture in the wood will actually uh, bond it, uh, set, set the adhesive. So if I take this here and I put it in, now we have an inlay. Um, I also, a fellow came here yesterday and he said he had had a, uh, a heart attack and uh, he wanted to give gifts to the surgeons and the, uh, and the support staff. And he wanted to know, could we actually engrave the shell? So I said, well, let's find out. And so I, it turns out by getting the power and speed correct, we were able to do that. So then I decided to do the easy inlay. Um, and it, all we did was uh, engrave this to a depth about halfway. And then uh, Scott, the owner of the company, uh, sort of painted it in with some uh, special dyes and so this way this is actually below the surface it's not sitting on top of the surface so that was a couple of nice things we did we also did um, some mother of pearl and we had that with uh, a corner like this it made it a little smaller um, and so we cut the pockets of the corners and then cut the um, individual pieces, um, each corner separately, but each corner was six, six pieces. And the thing is that uh, you don't want to do this on a honeycomb. We actually cut it on top of a piece of wood and burning the wood because you don't want these little pieces falling out. Um, and uh, so then he sanded it down and did a finish on it and it was pretty nice. We also show how we can take an image and put it onto a ceramic tile. Uh, I don't use a paint method. I use Enduramark charcoal, which is a spray powder, and it washes off with water and it, 
it dries immediately. It's very nice stuff. It's expensive, but uh, you get very, very nice results with that. I also showed a little bit of how you could cut. Um, this is Baltic birch, so I'm doing a combination of engraving and cutting, which is nice. And the organization that I set up for wood turners who are interested in uh, technology uh, is called Lucid Wood Turners. So we make badges uh, for people and um, have magnets on the back because I use magnets for everything. So that gives an idea of, um, of what we've been doing. Oh, by the way, this is me. And um, uh, if you just come on this side here, go back that way. And so this is the entire setup. It's on wheels and uh, it's, it's very nice. So people can actually watch what's going on on the monitor here. Uh, they can see whatever I have on my computer can be up on the monitor. And I very easily switch between the Xtool software and the camera that I added in the front. Thanks for watching.